Another lesson in physics, we have instantaneous velocity and acceleration. Okay, instantaneous velocity. Pag sinabing instantaneous, uh, we are referring to a certain point in time. Unlike yung mga ibang velocity na ina-average, pag sinabing a certain point in time, hindi interval. Hindi siya hindi siya during 6 seconds but at actually 6 seconds no anong ibig sabihin noon ang ibig sabihin noon no puntahan natin yung equation mo ng velocity ang equation mo ng velocity is the change in position this is the displacement over the change in time but we don't want a change in time when we want a single point in time so ang gagawin natin yung time interval natin Okay, yung change in time natin, mas approach zero. Kasi kung single point in time yan, ibig sabihin, yung final time ko must be equal to the initial time. Pero kung may minus mo kasi yan dalawa to get yung change in time, zero yan. Uh, hindi ka makapag-divide sa zero, kaya gagamitan natin ng ganitong uh, notation. At etong notation na to, this is a familiar notation. Kapag nagtitake ka ng calculus, this is actually the definition of a derivative. So, ibig sabihin, pwede ko itong i-translate mula sa limit notation. Gawin nating derivative. Okay, so wala na yung nakalagay na average. But we have here the velocity is equal to the derivative of the position per or with respect to time or or since this is the derivative, we know that the derivative is the slope. Okay? Slope of the position versus time curve. Useful only when, ito, no, ito yung note, no, useful when the velocity is not constant. Or, for example, may acceleration, so hindi siya constant. This is related dito sa next slide natin. This is related dito sa next slide in such a way na bakit merong dalawang approach sa physics. No? Bakit may dalawang approach? We have a physics course na based on algebra and trigonometry. We call that college physics. And we have a calculus-based physics na tinatawag din nating university physics. So, kapag algebra or trigonometric, trigonometry base, maraming ano, constant. For example, dito, the value of uh, velocity is a constant. So, pag in mo yung position versus time graph, it will be a straight line. And to get the slope of the straight line at any point, okay, kailangan mo lang yung rise over yung run. So, 4 meters dito, 4 seconds doon. So, for this example, the velocity is 1 meter per second. Kasi, di ba, yung average velocity is, ito, this is the rise, ito yung run. So, position yung x, yung vertical. Okay? So, for this example, the average velocity is 1 meter per second. And this velocity is true at any point. No? Kahit saan ka, tumingin, ang slope ng line is a constant. Since this is a line, yung slope niya is constant. Okay? Now, there are instances na we are not referring sa line dito sa position time graph natin na yung, yung velocity natin is not a line but actually a, a curve, no? A curve that has changing slope. So, for example, tingnan mo sa point A, Okay, sa point A, yung slope ng line ko ay ganito. Pagdating sa point B, mas matarik siya. Yung point A at point B na slope hindi equal. So, habang, habang pupunta ako doon, habang lumilipas yung oras, lalong nag-iiba yung slope ko. The slope changes. Pero yung average slope from A to B, I can still compute it as delta x over delta y. So, on average, no? On average, ito yon yung red na dotted line. But, if I'm interested in getting the slope at or the velocity at a certain point, I will need to use calculus. Or yung definition mo nung limit, di ba? Nung, nung derivative is derivative of the change in position over the derivative uh, or the derivative of 
x with respect to time. So, kaya nagkakaroon ng calculus base P6. Kapag nawawala yung pagiging constant ng mga inoobserba natin, pag naging mas malalang equation na siya. Okay? So, these are the two approaches in physics. Algebra and trigonometry base and we have calculus base physics. So, as a continuation doon sa physics lessons natin, I want you to remind na velocity is a vector reminder lang. No? It's a vector, so we can express it into its component. So, I have here a vector in polar form. Pag sinabing polar form, ang given is r at an angle of theta. So, r is the distance from the origin. So, in this case, it's v. Ito yun, v. Tapos, the angle is theta, polar form. Pwede mo siyang gawing rectangular components. We have Vx plus By. And taking na ito yung positive, no? Vx, By. Uh, you can use trigonometry or other things para makuha yung Vx. So, in trigo, Vx is equal to V times cosine of theta, yung x component niya. We call this the x component. Okay, or sa so y naman, uh, vy is v sin theta, we call this the y component. Okay, konting trigonometry lang para makuha yung component ng vectors. Like me video kung ayos. Pag hindi, pag mo hindi dislike, leave ka ng comment kung bakit ha. Sige na, subscribe.